Hello everyone, my name is Hisham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics in uh, Seneca, South Carolina, across the road from the Oconee County Regional Airport, uh, known to most people as the Clemson Oconee Airport, uh, because of the proximity, of course, with Clemson University, just a couple of miles down the road. Uh, we're starting our uh, RV-14A build, and uh, the main purpose of this videos that we're going to be uh, putting out on YouTube is to demonstrate our tools that we make at Clemson Aeronautics to help uh, people with their experimental aircraft build, to make it a little bit uh, easier and uh, more precise and better repeatability on your dimpling and riveting needs for the, your experimental aircraft. Uh, this video is not meant, or all of these videos are not meant really, as instruction how to build the aircraft. Uh, you have to consult your own medals. When I was going through Greenville Technical College in Greenville, South Carolina, I attended the course Aviation Maintenance Technologies for two years and I graduated with honors, uh, thankfully. Most of the time, our textbooks, when they talk about something in maintenance, it refers you to the manufacturer's manual. So, same here. If you're building an aircraft, don't take our word for it. You have to consult your manual, your building manual. Uh, without further ado, we will begin, but um, to learn just a few things um, in general as far as building uh, an airplane and uh, the tools that you use. Uh, one of the things that I've seen a lot on the internet is people going out and buying pneumatic drills. Uh, pneumatic drills is used by an aircraft mechanic, usually in a hangar full of airplane that is full of fuel. So we're worried about sparks and setting up the hangar on fire and blowing up the airplanes. Other than that, there is no need to have a pneumatic drill. There is no need for it while you're building an airplane. So unless you're planning to put a can of gas or something under your table, a cordless drill will do you a lot of good. As a matter of fact, this drill here is like a $60 drill that I got two years ago and I tortured it and I dropped it on the concrete a few times from eight feet high while I was building this shop. And uh, all that happened that it just separated the battery from the body, put it back together, it runs fine, and it runs true. That is the important part, is when it runs, it runs true. And thankfully, nothing happened to that, and it, and it does run true. So all you need is a, just a nice cordless drill with a spare battery. One will be on the charger, and the other one will be in the drill. And that's it. You don't need a lot of torque or a lot of power to drill the holes that you're gonna do in in, in aluminum. And uh, and I'm a machinist, professional machinist with a lot of experience in machining and CNC machining, and that's what we're doing here in making our tools. So take it from me. Just a regular cold this drill will suffice. The other thing that I want to talk about is deburring. When you're deburring holes after you uh, drill them and so forth, and uh, this this deburring tool here is from Cleveland Aircraft Tools, and I just so happened to watch their video today. I just ran across it uh, by accident, and they were recommending a drill. A quarter drill just li just like that, except the one that they had was very expensive, uh, black and decker 
drill that had gears and stuff and, and he was recommended just buy a cheap drill from Walmart or something. What's good about this drill is the RPM, 180 RPM, that means it makes three revolutions per second. And all you have to do is touch the material two-thirds of a second and you have two full turns to deeper the hole that, that you want to deeper. And this is really all you need with just a little bit of light pressure. You have to be careful. If you put a chamfer on it from both sides, you're going to eat up the hole. So you have to be really, really careful with that. So just a nice light touch and all you have to do is just that's it and maybe even you want to start it rotating then just touch it and let go then the next hole and so on so that's it a very cheap it cost me 10 bucks so that's another important thing don't go waste your money on very very expensive tools that's not gonna do very much for you and it's not gonna make any difference in your build uh, one more thing just to watch for because I see people uh, doing this mistake uh, we're talking a lot about small drills so if you want to measure a small drill they tell you, well, just measure the shank and see what it is well this drill here is a very high quality drill let me tell you this is a machine shop okay this is a high quality drill and here's the shank and it measures exactly 0 0.0965 this is a number 40 drill that's supposed to be 0 0.098 so the shank is one and a half thousands smaller than the drill itself so when you're trying to find the correct drill and measuring the shank does not tell you the whole story and I guarantee you you put that in this drill and drill a hole when you measure the hole is going to be more than 0 0.098 it will probably 99 or even a hundred thousand so be careful when you're trying to pick out your drill if you don't know what it is usually you use a drill and put it in something and write on it what this drill is so you don't have to try and play the guess game Drill bits don't make a round hole, folks. Uh, and you can even ask Vans or Crafts. They will tell you. So you get a number 30 drill or a number 40 drill and drill right through your material. If you, put, if you magnify that, you're going to see something that's close to a rectangle than a circle. So what is their answer or answer in aviation to this kind of issue is to use the reamer. Use an undersized drill first, then ream the hole. The reamer usually have like four or five flutes in it. And the way it's designed, is designed to give you a nice round hole, very close to the dimension that you are asking usually just a little bit more but this is what you're gonna get it's a more of a round hole than a drill will ever give you unless you are on a CNC machine and it is so rigid my my machine here weighs 20,000 pounds so the rigidity there is phenomenal the tool holders are very very rigid and it's held very rigid in this minute so you have to be careful with that. Reamers in this project is your friend. Uh, when we start this now, we're starting at page six, 
dash 2. And uh, right off the bat, you're putting two parts together and you're doing something called match drilling. What is match drilling? Some folks don't know. So I would like to take a minute to explain that. Match drilling is when you have a part that has the whole pattern in it and the other part does not even have a hole. So you actually want to drill this part to match the whole pattern on this part. This is called match drilling. Final drilling is both of them have holes and they are lined up together very closely. And what the manufacturer wants you to do is drill it a size bigger. Like let's say this is a 332nd hole in both of them. So you line up together and then you run a, run a, a number 40 drill through it to take it up to 0 0.089. That is called final drilling. So these, this is kind of a, a thing you're going to use throughout your build. So I hope I was clear enough about that and um, I hope uh, that you follow along our build. Well folks the, uh, the first operation in page 6-2 is uh, we're going to be riveting this which is VS01401 uh, and it is a uh, front spar doubler to the front spar of the vertical stabilizer. That front spar is called VS702. I took all the uh, protective covering off and what we have to do is put a couple of clicos here here and it tells you to start drilling this thing is not very solid so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use a clamp that I got from Lowe's very close to the center hole here and then we're gonna start drilling and what it calls for actually is match drill number 40 I know that could start a storm on the internet talking about what I'm about to do, but I elected to use a 332nd drill to drill this first. I'm going to drill the uh, 10 holes with the 332nd drill. And by the way, you don't need to go very fast. So, all my holes are drilled to 332nd at this point. Actually, it doesn't look half bad. After that, and that is my preference. Now I have a 332nd hole. I'm going to change that drill bit 
I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put a, a carbide point zero nine five reamer that is a carbide reamer the by the way as far as machinist uh, is concerned when it comes to reaming usually in machining reaming something usually is half the rpm and double the speed that is what we use in uh, in normal machine shops so you don't really need to go very fast and i'm gonna ream 095 the six holes that's the lower ones that's gonna be dimpled later on for a flat hat uh, rivet okay that did not go very well because there is a block of wood underneath so I need to get that out of the way Now I'm going to take that out and put it back. And I'm going to use a point zero nine six reamer for the top four holes. Again, this is just my preference and it's raining cats and dogs I don't know if you guys hear that in the video or not but we still have one quarter inch hole to drill and I'll be right back as for the quarter inch hole that is called for here I'm gonna start it out with a this is just a number 30 drill which is 0.128 I'm going to open it up first I'm going to switch over I have a, a 1364 carbide drill that I have that's in pretty good shape so I'm going to put that and open up that hole a little bit further getting closer to the quarter inch Then I will swap that, and that is a 1564. Can't grip it. Sketching.
And when it does that, you need to kind of go light on the pressure a little bit because the drill is grabbing. And now, and uh, the reason I'm really careful with this hole because the vertical stabilizer is is bolted down to the empennage section in two areas. The front part is this with just a quarter inch bolt. So I just wanted to make a clean hole here with accurate size. So because this is what's holding my vertical stabilizer from the front. So I need to just be careful and make it pretty close to uh, what we need and this is a quarter inch reamer I I'm using it because I have it this is a machine shop we of course have a quarter inch reamer so if you don't you need a, a nice clean sharp quarter inch drill uh, just to make sure Now, I want you all to look at this. Now, this is as close to round as you can get. Uh, obviously, the drill bit did not do a nice job as far as drilling the hole, but the reamer did. And that's the final product and that's what we're aiming for and I'm gonna make my line and it is true <laughs> the blue sharpie does stay on the material better and uh, another thing folks pencil is used to write things in your shop and in your work it is not made to mark anything with the carbon and lead and stuff you don't want that on your material so now we're gonna need to uh, cut this part off and the way I am gonna have it sitting in the saw it's gonna be this way so I decided what I'm going to do was simply taking these two clicos out I'm just gonna put it back in this way on the other side to match I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click it here again. And, yep, the hole should line up again, but on the other side, and I'm gonna make my mark over here. Then, I will simply take the clickers out and I'm just gonna put this on the line right here and I hold it like that on the line and I'm just gonna mark all the way up to the edge and maybe you guys can see I'm gonna do the same thing over here
There's the light. Now, I know it was sitting like this. Yep. So, I'm going to mark this as front. 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 That way we're sure this is the front side because I meant for it to uh, be that way and then clamp it with these so I remember. But anyhow, this is the mark and I am, this is the front obviously and we know that. But now we have the mark from the inside and the way I'm going to have to put it in the saw, I'm going to have to put it like this. So now I have a line to look at when I'm cutting it out from the inside. So I'll go get set up on the saw. So here I am going to cut just outside the line and leave some I'm going to take out on the buffer. This edge here is leaning this way. Now since most household don't have one of these at home, uh, you need to know this. First of all, the blade need to be brand new and use it only on the aluminum that you're going to use, need to be very sharp. The edge here is leaning that way so when I engage the material I have to engage it very slow because if I go in heavy it will grab this and it will tilt it like this. So I need to be slow while I'm doing this cut and leave a little bit of material that I'm going to take out on the uh, buffing wheel. actually worked well after we buff it it should be really nice uh, the other part that we need to cut while we're at it here is this we just need to separate this from this and then buff that on the Okay, we'll start uh, with this one. It's nice and smooth. Then we're going to do this one. We need to go, we don't want to go like this. We want to go like this. You have to be careful. Sometimes you can go like this, but you have to make sure 
the wheel doesn't grab it and push it down because you could push it down so fast you can cut your hand or something. Now, this calls for this to be radius. So, what we do is we can go like this. I think this is it for those two parts. Now we need to deburr the holes. For uh, deburring the quarter inch hole, I have this. I'm just gonna do it by hand, like this. That's all it takes. Just knock the edge out. And all what it is, is to make sure there is no crack that starts there. It will be just nice and smooth edge. And we'll do the same thing here. Yeah. This is all it takes. Now, the smaller holes, of course, need to be uh, chamfered on both sides, I mean, uh, deburred on both sides. I'm going to run the drill, I'm just going to barely touch each hole. This one is a little bit. And if there is a little bit on there that's just can barely feel it, you don't want to do it with the uh, with this tool anymore. You gotta do it with this cut sprite when you scuff it before you uh, prime it. That's it. So this goes like this, and it's ready to be dimpled. And now all what's left is to dimple both parts that we have prepared yesterday. And I already set up the machine to do so. So, let's test this out with a rivet. I'll bring a rivet, I'll be right back. Now I'm checking this with the rivet. The result is pretty good. The rivet is really flush with the surface. But to understand what I was doing yesterday, um, why 
I reamed these hole 0 0.095 now that I have dimpled it let's check the diameter on this hole now and see what it is and these are the Cleveland aircraft tool dies now <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. This is a hundred thousand. Now, the reason I dimpled it so much smaller than what is called for in the, the building manual is because I know when you dimple this, this hole will open up some more. So it opened up to a hundred thousand. Now that rivet is still zero nine three five. That's that's what this rivet is. And let's check it out on the caliper again. It says zero nine four. So it will be swimming the amount of six thousand inside that hole. That's why I elected to ream the hole zero nine five. We'll continue with the rest of the holes, then we might talk about that a little later then. Now all six holes are dimpled, and just to check the, the machine and the dimples, that is what we got and let's do it without the rivet I don't know you guys can see that they're all nice let's check the diameter of these holes 101 and a half 101 oh this one is 103 This is a hundred thousand. This is a hundred thousand. Hundred and two. Hundred and one. Hundred and two. So, dimpling opens up the hole quite a bit. That's why I didn't want to go with the larger drill bit, which is number 30. We'll uh, do... Uh, the front spar and you want to make sure we are correct and we are because this goes this way so we're going to start That's it. Now how this is going to do <coughs> the material sits there pretty flush. This is all we're going to do to these two pieces because we're going to prime them so I can't rivet them as it's called in page 6-2 uh, so at this point I'll make a note in my notes that we have to rivet this before we continue uh, in the construction of the skeleton on to the next page